Do you remember how sometimes you watch your favorite TV show and all of a sudden the lead character is played by a different actor? It's weird, right? You're just meant to accept this could be the same dude, but it's not. Wrestling is actually very similar to this because if a gimmick has worked before, it stands to reason it could work again. So when you're out of ideas, just do a copy. Therefore, I am signed for what culture. Please do hit that subscribe button. This is indeed 10 wrestling characters played by multiple people. Number 10, The Nature Boy. Ric Flair is the guy we associate with this the most, but I tell you, he wasn't the first. That's right. The original Nature Boy came in the form of Buddy Rogers, who was also the first man to hold the WWF Championship. He dubbed himself with such a name all the way back in 1950, where he would prance around like he owned the place and constantly waft his bleach blonde hair out of his face. So if you're looking for the template of the modern wrestling heel, you start with old Buddy. This is why 20 years later, a young Ric Flair thought he could pull this off too, so copied it verbatim. Be it the robes and even the finishing move, Flair just felt like enough time had passed that somebody could continue it on, let's face it, he wasn't wrong. The third man was Buddy Landell, which admittedly is weird because now we've even got wrestlers with the same name doing it. <laughs> this guy, he just looked at what Rick was doing and hit copy and paste, sometimes even when they were in the same promotion. It's a bit ridiculous. To be fair, Landell wasn't as successful as the other two, so this has slipped under the radar in modern times. But it does leave one big question. What even is a nature boy? Answers on a postcard. Makes no sense. Number nine, Sting. So Steve Borden smashed this, didn't he? For the best part of five decades, Sting was a staple of wrestling and the amount of times he reinvented himself. The man is a hero and a legend. This is why when somebody else claimed they were the Stinger in 1996, people were a bit confused, as you would be. Imagine somebody knocked on your door and said they were you. I mean, even me saying that is gibberish. The whole point was, at this time, the NWO were trying to stitch everybody up as well as the icon. So much so, tag team partner Lex Luger started to question his loyalty. Whose side was he on? This led to the full brawl pay-per-view, and yep, to the shock of many, the face-painted man turned on the good guys when another Sting then joined in. The flub is going on. As it turned out, the first Sting was Jeff Farmer, a New World Order recruit who was hired to trick everyone. Now, it kind of worked because the real Sting was so outraged he left the fray, but that meant the fake Sting then tapped out Luger. As we all know, he would quite literally become fake Sting after this, and even did the gimmick in Japan seems even more unfair. I suppose you could say there was a third version as well, given sometimes Borden would wear a Sting mask over his Sting makeup, which yes, if you're wondering, is the best spot in all of wrestling. Number eight, Mr. Wrestling. I always love this. If you're going to get into wrestling, why not be Mr. Wrestling? Who could be better than that? We do start with Johnny Walker, who was basically retired come 1972 when he got an offer from promoter Paul Jones. He thought the Georgia market was more than ready for a Mr. Wrestling 2, and Walker agreed. It worked because it changed Johnny's life forever, and you're now asking yourself, well, what happened to the first version? Because that belonged to George Wooden, who you may know better as Tim Woods, and yeah, he was a huge success in this role, even making it to the WWF for a short period. Mr. Wrestling 2 was also brought in as the original's partner, although what they relationship was we'll never know because nobody told us it also meant that yep you had two dudes called mr wrestling what a wonderful stupid spot they both wore masks which added to the gimmick and walker found so much momentum former u.s president jimmy carter even wanted to meet him he must have been a fan woods retired in 1983 but johnny kept doing the character and years later steve carino would even become mr wrestling 3 and of course, he teamed with number two, and they won some tag titles down in Hawaii. <laughs> this is madness. Number seven, the Conquistadors. Now, back in the 90s, this was just an enhancement talent tag team booked to wear weird costumes, masks, and then lose. That was it. So when the gold-covered duo returned in 2000, everyone was baffled. They had never been much of anything, and even more strange was the fact they now seemed to act like Edge and Christian. That's because it was them. This is when the ludicrousness started, because you would have videos with all of them in the same room, but of course this was a ruse. It was just a way to beat the Hardys for the tag team titles in the same year and protect themselves simultaneously. So that was smart. It then got proper attitude era as 24 hours later there was a rematch, but this time it was Matt and Jeff being the conquistadors, and yep, they won the belt back. If you're now thinking this is needlessly complicated for television, you'd be right. That's not what this list is for. It's to underline wrestlers who doubled up on gimmicks, and this one just happened at pretty much the same time. Number six, Sin Cara. So I like to be a positive Pete, but yeah. The first Sin Cara 
didn't really go to plan. Triple H's first big hire as head of talent relations. For one reason or another, we couldn't replicate what Mr. Co had been doing in Mexico because he kept falling over. Not great for a dude that was meant to be a super duper high flyer. This would have been fine mostly, I think, but when he started to fail wellness tests, well, they didn't look good. Eventually, WWE wanted to get rid of the man, but not the gimmick, so they just changed the person under the mask. Jorge Arriaga would step into the shoes, and man, did this get bonkers. Because eventually, he unmasked to become Hunako, and then both versions were feuding with the other, and yet none of it actually got over. Eventually, Hunako did become Sin Cara again that he played for another six years, and I can safely say now, you will never see another one again, because even me trying to describe this was a mess. Number five, Kane. Do you remember Remember when we had two canes? What a time to be alive. Basically done because back in 1994, we had done Undertaker vs. Undertaker. WWE decided in 2006 enough time had gone by so we could repeat the storyline and just use the dead man's brother. It also tied into the fact the original Big Red Machine, Glenn Jacobs, was haunted by the date May 19th, which also happened to be when his movie See No Evil was being released. So yes, this was marketing. It then led to the 1997 version of Kane appearing, which was played by none other than Luke Gallows, mostly because he was around the same height, and apparently this is all we needed. The pair then fought at the Vengeance pay-per-view, and the imposter won, which led many fans to shout out loud, what the hell are we doing? Clearly everybody else then realized this story sucked as the next night on Raw, the first Kane got rid of his doppelganger, and it could have been down to the awful wig Gallows had to wear. Because as the rumor goes, Vince McMahon hated it. I am not surprised. Number four, The Undertaker. And we did just talk about this. You should have seen it coming. But yes, we needed a weird main event for SummerSlam 1994, even though Bret and Owen Hart could have filled this slot. So after Yokozuna had killed the Fiendarm at the Royal Rumble, we greenlit it. It was so bizarre as Ted DiBiase was the guy to bring the dead man back, but it was quite clearly not the person we remembered. It just looked a little bit off and WWE smashed you over the head with this because it was obvious what we were doing. And yes, it was actually played by Brian Lee, who you may know better as the leader of the Disciples of Apocalypse a few years later. He was also The Undertaker's friend. We even hired Leslie Nielsen to try and solve this case, which I did love because that guy was a hero. And then we got to the pay-per-view and the proper Undertaker returned and the pair had an average match. And trust me, that is me being very, very kind. Number three, Diesel and Razor Ramon. Ah, this old chestnut. Never gets any easier, does it? Because after Kevin Nash and Scott Hall had decided to go to WCW, Vince McMahon was upset. He felt like he had invested time in the Diesel and Razor Ramon characters, so this was no good, when all of a sudden he had a plan. It didn't matter if he had the original performers under contract, because why not just take two random wrestlers and say that they were Big Daddy Cool and the bad guy? Well, I can tell you that because it's stupid. Jim Ross had to introduce these two and surprise, surprise, the audience was livid because they had been tricked. This created so much hoo-ha, the rumor goes, that Eric Bischoff even increased Halls and Nash's wages as he too thought they were going back to the World Wrestling Federation. I mean, this was nonsense. It was also an utter failure and ruined Rick Bogner's career because he could never shake the stigma of being the fake Razor Ramon. Glenn Jacobs' as Diesel was a little better because only as discussed, he became Kane. But I tell you, all of this was touch and go. Number two, suicide. TNA suicide was always a little strange because he was born out of a video game. For some reason, the company decided to have the story focus on this guy who had amnesia and had to get his memory back so he could become a world champion. I mean, that makes perfect sense to me. I suppose management thought it was a success, so he became a real fighter. And then, man, everybody took on this role. Frankie Kazarian was the first guy to do it, but he had duties as his real self too, so Christopher Daniels would also help out. TNA just refused to get rid of this persona, however. So soon, Jonathan Gresham, TJ Perkins, Ishimori, and Nash Carter can also lay the claim. Daniels even won the X Division title as this dude, as did Austin Aries. I don't want to get into that. It all turned out to be ludicrous and was just impossible to follow. I suppose the promotion needs some credit for having such faith in the gimmick and we even saw him as recently as 2021 so ironically he's not dead yet and maybe you could be the next suicide too all your dreams come true number one doink and maybe just maybe suicide's run was inspired by doink my word 
everybody has been flipping doink. The first one debuted in 1992 with Matt Bourne under the makeup, and this was the best version. Matthew wanted to play it like some sort of demon clown, and it was genuinely unsettling. Sadly, he ran into personal problems and WWE let him go, but clearly they were set on the gimmick, so the ran began. Steve Kern, who was also Skinner, tried it for a bit, as did Ray Licamelli, who was doink many times, including the WrestleMania 17 gimmick Battle Royal. The Brooklyn brawler Steve Lombardi did it in 2012 too, and while the character appeared at the 2020 Money in the Bank match, nobody knows who this was so it's unknown. We haven't even touched the surface because so many other people have also done it, including a one-time appearance by Chris Jericho. It will work, though, as we still talk about him today, and there's a contingent of fans who would take him back tomorrow. I do believe I'm one of them. Don't at me. Know of any of the wrestling characters that were played by multiple people? Please let us know in the comments below, and don't forget to like the video, share the video, and subscribe. Then head over to whatculture.com where you can read yourself some articles. Make sure you come follow us on social media at whatculturewwe and Simon316, and we do have a lot of other videos. Why don't you watch one? My name is Simon for What Culture. Thank you very much for joining me as always, and I'll talk to you again very soon.